Welcome back to Modern Homestead Alaska. Today we're going to install this beautiful heat shield behind the wood cook stove. If that's something you're interested in, I think you stick around. But first, let's coffee. Now that we've done all of our chores, our coffee is hot and ready, let's go ahead and sit down and watch some YouTube. surround that was built for our house by a company in Wasilla, Alaska called All Steel. I'm actually going to include their information in the description box in the event that you're in this area. This is our surround. It is a textured black. When you touch it, it doesn't leave fingerprints um, and the pieces are going to slide together. This is completely cut and rolled for this wall here, the big wall, and then the pony wall that is behind the wood cook stove. It has a clearance, and then the drywall that's on this wall and that wall is specific and thicker as a heat shield itself. And then there's a dimension from the cabinets to the stove itself. 
So although it looks like it's floating out there, we cannot have any combustible. So that would be um, wood, those sort of things that would uh, could catch on fire or combust due to heat. So Aaron is back and ready to go. Good morning and update. We got this panel wall in last night. A couple of things that looked off are the outlet was just bright white on there. So that is getting painted as is the cover. And then this little strip of wall here had to get painted a matte black as well to tie the cabinets into the panel. And the reason that strip is there and not tight to it all the way is the countertop comes out to the same distance as the floating shelf. We would have had a big notch in the panels if we would have tied them all the way here. So a little bit of matte black paint kind of fixes that. So right now, Erin is working on the pony wall. And what we actually have to do different on the installation here is the panels are sliding down these J channels into the bottom. And then right now Aaron is notching the floor register vent that goes there. Then we slide them in and we'll have the finish trim and we will show you the end product. this beautiful surround of this wood cook stove. I could not be happier. I am so in love with how it turned out and I hope that you are too. It has been a long couple of days around here and I'm about to pull some bread out of the oven and throw together a 10 minute dinner for the kids. They're about to roll in from basketball and work and all that they have going on. Would you go ahead and join me while we cook on the wood cook stove for the first time on camera? So bear with me. This is new to me and it'll be new to you, but I would like if you would join me. We are going to make a bacon, mascarpone, and pea pasta. I've pre-cooked the pasta because I am notorious for only wanting to use one pan. So I've already got the pasta done. I'm gonna get the baking going and we're gonna throw together this pasta and have it done before the kids walk through the door. Here is the ingredient list for tonight. So this is bacon that Aaron just cured and smoked while he was here. Um, 
mascarpone or mascarpone, not sure how to say that. Some Parmigiano Reggiano, garlic, onion, fresh parsley, olive oil, and peas, and a little bit of pasta water. Gonna get a little olive oil in the pan. The pan has been preheating. I'm gonna toss in this bacon. Let that render down just a little bit. Make a butter and olive oil dip for the bread. So half a stick of butter. Good shot of olive oil. Some fresh crushed garlic. You just want that to melt down and spend a couple of minutes together. Um, we do not want it browning or overcooking the garlic at all. All right, this bacon is done what I needed it to do. I am gonna move it to a dish. And then I am going to save this uh, bacon fat with lard and use it in some other dishes later. Look at all those good bits that we have left going on there. I'm gonna turn this stove way down at this point, I don't need it blasting or blaring anymore. We've still got our butter going over here. And to this pot, I'm gonna add a, a little bit more olive oil, about like that, tablespoon or so. We chopped up that onion, let's go in with that. It is purple or red because this is all I have and I was not gonna go to the store to make a quick dinner tonight. All right, let's cook these onions down, get the bits and scrape the edges of the pan and see what we can't get out of there. I'm gonna go in the onions with a little bit of salt, some just fine ground sea salt. Now keep in mind the um, pasta water has salt in it, so the pasta has been seasoned. And my husband likes to grind me large amounts of pepper when he is here, so a little bit of pepper. Let's see, even though we have the black pepper, I still wanna go in with some red pepper flakes. Pinch or two. Sweat the onions, low and slow. That looks so good. We are gonna go in with the garlic. I'm only gonna give the garlic a couple of seconds. We do not want that browning or overcooking. And now for the mascarpone. So I have 16 ounces, which is quite a bit more than what I need for a pound of pasta. So I'm going to do just over half of this container and start letting that melt down. And then I'm probably going to need some of the pasta water, but I saved about a cup of the pasta water. Right, that is nice and melted. We're gonna check for salt and pepper. I think a little bit of pepper. That's right where it needs to be. We're gonna get the pasta going in here. Like I said, I pre-boiled these. <laughs> I used the same pot on the wood cook stove here just so I didn't have a bunch of dishes. And then I coated them in a little bit of olive oil. We want that pasta to start absorbing that. And then straight in with the frozen peas. So as the peas heat through, the pasta will finish. All right, that is nice and warm. So let's put the bacon back in. I can hear my boys pulling in. Now it's a meaty bacon and pea pasta. The truck is here, my kids are hungry. Let's have a look. Let's get this plate it up. Yes, sir. Into the serving bowl, oh. same spoon. 
Little Parmesan cheese on top. Just in case you need a little more green, a little bit of parsley. Let's make this bread cut. So we did some herbs in this. We did um, a little bit of thyme and a little bit of rosemary. It is still warm. And let's grab the butter. Get that. I put a little red pepper flake in when you weren't looking. All right, it's time for a taste test. Let's see how we did. Mm. That bacon is so salty and you get that smoke. Yeah, even after it's been put in the cream sauce and everything else, my husband does the best job with bacon. Let's check out our bread. Crunchy on top, the bottom. And then you just kind of rip your bread apart um, and dip it in the olive oil and butter with the garlic. I love bread. Way more than I should. So, dinner's gonna be perfect. Let me go feed my kids. Tastes amazing. Great big shout out and a thank you to everyone that stayed all the way to the end of the video. Would you do me a couple of favors if you haven't already? Would you subscribe to our channel and then turn on the notifications? That's by ringing that little bell on the side and it tells you when we post new videos. If you give me a thumbs up and comment below, that also helps the algorithm and grow our channel. If you are interested at all in how we heated this house with this pellet stove for most of this Alaskan winter um, and how well it did, then stick around the channel. This is going to be next week's video. I'll see you soon.